Let's just talk about love. Love, what a word. God is love. The ultimate of all things. The highest. The essence. Beyond which you cannot go. Is love. Love is not personal. It's not something you have. It's not even something you feel. It is the nature of life itself. It is the inter internal unity, singularity of oneness. All love points us, all human love in every form it takes, points us back to this essential oneness. All of our thoughts have created a self-image of someone who is separate from love and thus seeks to find it. It is inconceivable to this self-image that it might actually be the love that it is seeking. From the point of view of the awakened one, it's like looking at the wave on the ocean, wandering the whole ocean looking for the ocean because it has mistakenly believed itself to be simply a wave that it could exist independently from the ocean. Please take this into your hearts, even as a meditation. You are love. It is not, you are not something that is trying to find it. You are that. Now, your mind will argue about that because for your mind, it's, it's something else altogether. I'm this, sometimes I feel loved, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I feel loving, sometimes I don't. The rise and fall, the flow of our emotional states and feelings is only a momentary wave on the ocean. The ocean itself is love and you are that. This is what I keep trying to point you back to. Right now, you are all aware of my voice, are you not? You're aware of the computer, the device you're watching this on, or, the, or whatever you're listening to this on. You're all aware of it, right? There's something that is cognizing this, this whole experience, everything we, we say, right? everything you hear. There's a point at which it is recognized, right? Something. This mysterious something, right? That nobody really knows what it is. That is, nobody in any of the, the realms of human knowledge, you know, there's, there's some assumptions about it. But this experience of my own existence, this self-aware consciousness, is the total mystery. You refer to it as the problem of consciousness in science because there's no explanation for it, really. And yet, here you are. You're it. You're hearing every word I say. Something, someone is hearing. Now, the question is, who is that that's hearing? Who are you that is hearing? And immediately when we say that, the mind says, oh, I'm this person and I do these things. And I, oh, these are all just thoughts. Right? about the actual experience. Just come with me for a moment into just the actual experience of being aware of yourself. The actual experience of being conscious. Not what you are conscious of, which is all the content, which is the mind and all the things that it does, all of that's well and good. We don't have to do anything with that. But be aware of the consciousness itself. Now, isn't that you? That must be you, because it's what's seeing everything else. Right? Right? What's the nature of that consciousness? This is the question. We assume many things, but I'm saying put all your assumptions aside. What is this nature? What is the name, the true name? Don't you find it fascinating that no matter what the language, no matter what the what any any experience of nationality or 
or gender or anything. We all have the same name. Nobody refers to themselves. I don't refer to myself as GP. I don't, GP, GP wants that, right? <laughs> I say I. You say I. Everything says I. My name is I. And it's the same name as yours. What is this I? This I that sees, that sees everything. And there could be no experience whatsoever if you weren't there, if I wasn't there. This I, this intuitive knowledge, I am, well, that was the revelation to Moses. That's God. This, the consciousness that is aware of my words right now, is the ultimate consciousness, the one I it is not just a person, this body. And this I am, this God, is love. How could it not be? There's nothing other than it. It's, it's everywhere. It's in everything. It sees everything. It has no enemies. Love has no enemies, does it? Love is pure love. It's never hateful. It's never restrictive. It's never indifferent. It's pure love. It's just love. That's all it is. That's all it could be. It can't be anything else but. Which means nothing is unacceptable. Nothing is rejected. It has no enemies. <laughs> so it is fearless. That's what Christ meant when he said, love your enemies. You love your enemies, you discover you don't have any. That the enemy was a creation of your mind. An attempt to separate come back to love I am love it is love that is looking through these eyes right now and seeing it is love that is hearing the words that appear to be coming from me it is love that wants to open the heart it is love that wants everyone to share in love it is love that seeks truth it is love that seeks freedom it is you. You are love. That is your true nature. It always has been. It always will be. So it is nothing you need to get. It is nothing you need to do. <laughs> it is no behavior you have to try to adopt. No, no moral code you have to follow. It is what you are. Even Christ said that love was the fulfilling of the law. When you have love, there is no need for law. You don't need to be, you don't need the Ten Commandments anymore. Nobody who is love would, would ever do anything to hurt, harm, steal, mis, misrepresent anyone. Would not take anything that, that wasn't freely given. Would have no fear of lacking. You are love. Love is God. Love is the self. Love is the soul. Love is the heart. Love is the essence of everything that is made manifest. It is the being behind all beings. Just try as best you can to identify that which is obviously aware of everything else, not as a person happens to be occupying this body, but as an infinite principle, love, that is animating this body. I think I'm going to leave it for there for now. And uh, Somebody asked something about the observer <clears throat> and the observed. The observer is love. And if the observer is loved, what else does it observe other than love? 
And the ocean sees the wave. It doesn't, oh, there's a wave. It sees itself. Everything becomes defined by, characterized by love. And in everyday human experience, that, we don't, that doesn't mean we just embrace stupidity, brutality, greed, and all of those kinds of things, but we see them for what they are, the absence of love. <laughs> A, or love that is too small. Love that has focused itself. Greed is just simply love that has focused itself on possessions. And, and being different than somebody else. So it has simply narrowed itself to a, to a single object or attainment. But it's still love, isn't it? Right? They love that. <laughs> the love is just too small. Nothing happens except for love. And then I say, I hate what's on the other side. It's just because my love is too small. What if that boundary falls away and there is no other side? All is love. Love is all. God is love. Love is God. And love is your nature. God is your nature. Thank you all, dear friends. Thank you for being here today. I love you all. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart. Thank mm -hmm. you.